The Yaasindawa War The Yaasindawa War was a violent war that took place in West Africa during the early 20th century. It was a result of a series of conflicts between Great Britain and the Ashanti Empire. Led by Queen Mother Nana Yaasindawa, the war lasted only six months. The outcome shaped what West Africa became today. Who was Nana Yaasindawa? Nana Yaasindawa was an Ashanti queen at the beginning of the 20th century, whose legacy lives on today. Born between 1840-1860, in present-day Ghana, Nana Yaasindawa was known as a skilled farmer before ascending to the title Queen Mother in the 1880s. It was said that she was appointed by her elder brother, a powerful leader by the name of Nana Akwasi Afrain Okpace. She would later on become the face of the war. So, what caused the Yaasindawa War? There are numerous factors for the Yaasindawa War, the British and the Ashanti people had a feud ever since Britain set foot on the Gold Coast. The feud became more serious after Britain started expanding their territory. Conflict really heightened when in 1896, the Ashanti people began to rebel against the British presence on their lands, and their attempt to construct the Gold Coast colony. As an effort to prevent a big war, and to be on peaceful terms, in 1874 the British set forth a treaty, known as the Treaty of Famana. At the time, Kofti Karikari had become king, and had agreed to sign the unfair treaty, as he was on the run from the British. The harsh treaty included a payment of 50,000 ounces of gold, free passage of all roads, the refrainment of human sacrifice, the abandoning of control over neighboring nations, and the ending of paying rent from the forts. This angered the Ashanti people. Then in 1896, after a dispute between the Queen Victoria of England, where Asandihin Prempei refused to cover the cost of a British expedition, the British captured and exiled Asandihin Prempei, king of the Ashanti, and Asantawa's grandson Kofi Tene, who was also a powerful leader. This wasn't the first time that the Asandi king disrespected and rejected the British. To make matters worse, the British removed the king and other Ashanti leaders and chiefs to the Seychelles Islands in an effort to acquire the Golden Stool. As the only family member left of the royal family, Nana Yaasintawa soon became queen mother of the Ashanti Empire, but longed for a day to see the exiled Ashanti leaders take back their throne. The main conflict began when British Representative Senior Frederick Mitchell Hodgson, a British colonial administrator and governor of the Gold Coast, sat on the Golden Stool to prove his authority over the Asandi people. The Golden Stool is a sacred symbol of the Ashanti Empire, power, and culture, and is believed to possess the soul of the Ashanti people. Since the Queen Mother is elected to be the mother of the reigning king, she presents candidates for when the occupant of the stool, the chiefdom, becomes vacant, in turn protecting the establishment of authority. Additionally, since the Queen Mother is the main advisor for the king, and thus is the second highest position within the empire, she fulfills the role of guarding the Golden Stooley. In other words, the Golden Stool unites the Santi people, and Lodge. When Nana Yaasantawa heard of this, she was enraged and started the rebellion that later became known as the Yaasantawa War of Independence, or simply as the Yaasantawa War. The events that occurred during the rebellion made Nana Yaasantawa known as a legend, and as a powerful symbol throughout the world. After hearing of Senior Frederick Mitchell Hodgson's acts, Nana Yaasantawa and the remaining chiefs of the Ashanti Empire met in a secret meeting to determine the course of action. The chiefs struggled to agree on a military solution. Instead, they suggested conceding to British rule. Yaasantawa was livid with her fellow Asanti for even considering this. Soon deeply ashamed after Nana Yaasantawa voiced her anger, the chiefs prepared and organized forces to protect the stool, and to engage the British armed forces until the exiled Asanti chiefs were allowed to return. Word traveled to Hodgson about the meeting, and the plans of overthrowing the British, and he immediately sent a party of soldiers to warn the chiefs of British intolerance to any types of rebellion. The Hausa soldiers never returned and were believed to have been killed by the Asante. Hodgson saw this as a declaration of war against the British, and prepared for battle. Nana Yasantawa, whose leadership and passion led to her role as commander-in-chief of the Ashanti army, led the rebellion that resulted in the death of 1,000 British and allied African soldiers and 2,000 Ashanti. She gathered and commanded an army of over 5,000 Asante soldiers, and made it clear that the reason the Asante attacked the British and bombarded the Kumasi fort was because of the unlawful arrest and exile of Ajaman Prempei and other Asante chiefs as well as Hodgson's demand for the Golden Steel itself. The Asante, led by Nana Yas and Tawa, put up a strong and inspiring fight against the many cruel forces of the British, 
and kept them from marching beyond the Kumasi fort. Under siege at the Kumasi fort for weeks, the British and their fighters gradually ran out of supplies and endured an outbreak of disease leading some to flee to the Asante side. Hodgson was forced to call for a ceasefire. Hodgins, who was captured by the Asante, managed to escape and alert the British of the situation. Britain responded by sending about 1,400 troops from other colonies in British West Africa, to aid Hodgins in defeating the Asante. The troops arrived at Kumasi in less than 20 days, caughting the Asantes by surprise. They became outnumbered and outgunned and finally surrendered to the British, bringing the end of the Yas and Dawa War. The immediate outcome of the battle was that the local chiefs and Nana Yas and Tawa were caught and exiled to Seychelles, where Nana Yas and Tawa lived the remainder of her days, until she died at the age of 80 in the year 1920. The war was a huge bloodbath as well. Around 2,000 Asandi and 1,007 fighters on the British side were reportedly killed in the war. Both totals were higher than the deaths from all previous wars between the Ashanti and the British combined, making it one of the bloodiest wars of the Ashanti Empire. After the war, the British made the Asante Empire a colony of the British Crown, they had full control over the Asante Empire. However, even years after the war, the British were still unable to lay their hands on the Golden Stool, which had been the ultimate goal of the war. It is speculated that Asante had hidden the Golden Stool in a remote forest to keep it further away from the British in case Kumasi was captured. The long-term effects of the war heavily shaped what present-day Ghana is today. A few years after the war, the British, tired of seeking for the hidden stool, released the Asante Heen. Ajim and Prempeyai was released and returned to Kumasi in 1924. Later, in 1930, the remains of 29 Asante detainees, including those of Nana Yas and Tawa, were welcomed to Kumasi, where they were properly honored, and buried. Finally, in 1957 Asante was finally free, and a part of the independent state of Ghana. Nana Yas and Awa's courage and leadership later on challenged the many gender norms that held women down. Inspired by Nana Yas and Tawa, many women started to take up roles in the government, where they got their voices heard, and where they started to lead the people. The Yas and Tawa war may have been bloody and cruel, but it signified how strong and how courageous the Asante people were. They did not let the strong forces of the British beat them down, and stood their grounds, which inspired many more nations to follow in their footsteps. Thank you.